what's going on this week in BERT. Welcome to This Week in BERT, your source for first party, third party, and community BERT news. I'm BERT. Tonight's top story, Nerf Icon, back in the news once again. User ZBanded posted a photo of the Icon Spectre Rev 5 from Toys R Us Hong Kong. It includes the same original N-Strike yellow color scheme for the folding stock, the barrel, and the blaster itself. The only apparent difference seems to be the 10 included Elite Icon darts. Hooray! The price of 319 Hong Kong dollars translates to about 41 USD, but we can't confirm if that is a real price for the US because Toys R Us always had higher prices in the first place, and we don't even know if this is going to be coming to the US. Nothing's been spe uh, spoken about this at this time. More interestingly, on the back of the box, the Icon Longshot CS6 has been officially teased. The same N-Strike yellow color scheme on this blaster as well, but no price to compare at this time. Interestingly, for both of these blasters, the Icon logo is on the barrel, not the blaster. For the Spectre, maybe there wasn't enough room for it, but for the long shot, there definitely is. There's no reason it needs to be on the front blaster. So, in a way, you could just take off the barrel, and there's your Icon logo, and the blaster itself then looks exactly like it did from many, many years ago. Great. And there's not going to be any paint on the other side, so... If you really wanted these blasters, I guess you can be excited, like for the long shot. Otherwise, there's nothing special about Icon once again. And more disappointingly, where's my Icon Maverick? I don't ask for much. I just want an Icon Maverick. You can do the long shot finally, but you don't do the Maverick? It's fine. It's fine. You know, I can't do this. I just want the Icon Maverick. You have the stuff. Give me my Maverick. Give it to me. Give it. Give me the maverick. I knew I shouldn't have asked Bert to help me. I meant to ask Bray. Whatever. In more news, the Australian toy laws have changed a little bit. Uh, you might remember for a long time, blaster performance in Australia has been a lot lower in its stock form. You hear a lot about grey trigger blasters, and that's because their laws did not allow for the power that stock blasters would put out in other countries. Uh, the consumer good safety standard is what got updated, and it now allows for cross-compliance with European and American standards. So something about energy density, legalese is really hard to read, but long story short, uh, Australia should now be getting standard orange trigger stock blasters, which is awesome. No more gimped gray trigger blasters, and they might even get rival. I think if that happens, they'll be super excited. There's a new nerf shop in town, if town is around the uh, Denmark area of Europe. It's called vikingfoamarms.com, and they seem to be focusing on 3D printed blasters like the Caliburn, the Griffin, the Bulwark. I know a lot of people in the EU have had trouble sourcing uh, Caliburn hardware, um, making it difficult to build those kinds of blasters, so now there is another place you can go to get that done. The link to the website is in the description. A few months ago, images of a crystal clear woozy surfaced on Instagram, and it was unclear if they were 3D printed or injection molded. They, there was a lot of people talking about them. But last week, a listing appeared on an Asian website for the clear woozy shells, and the seller does not have permission from the creator to sell them. The clear woozy is not injection molded, according to our sources. It's instead resin printed and then hand polished. Uh, and because of the blatant disregard for the licensing, Australian Nerf Clubs have decided to ban the clear woozy shells from all of the games in Australia uh, to stand with Colin and just against the complete disregard for the licensing. Uh, we also believe it is morally wrong to support creators who are selling others' designs without permission, so we really, really urge the community not to purchase these clear woozies. For all your micro-wheel, mag-fed, shell-throwing needs, the Flypoint from GDOP26 is now out of beta and released for sale. Uh, it's got pretty low performance, only 90 FPS, but it looks like a ton of fun to play with. The mechanical blowback and using shells is really, really silly, but it just looks like so much fun to use. And aesthetically, this thing looks darn cool. 
The blaster comes with a seven round mag and 10 shells, just in case you lose some, and you can get that for $175 at shellingtonblasters.com. Fortnite is the cash cow for Hasbro that just keeps on giving. And Nerf Ukraine shared an image of the box art for the Fortnite IR, or infantry rifle. Uh, and it appears to be a semi-auto flywheel blaster. Um, basically a strife reshell with a really long barrel that will probably interfere a significant amount with performance. Barrels are not super great for flywheel blasters. But the look of it is still pretty cool. I really, I, I love this cartoony style, it's super cool. Uh, the grip looks much bigger than the stupidly small one that's on the scar. Uh, so I'm excited to see what that actually looks like in person and feels like in an actual human hand. Uh, the stock looks kind of comically small, but I like the shape of it. It's, it still looks cool, even though it's small. It's gonna come with 12 darts, but it's unclear what the size of the mag is. From the box art, it doesn't look like a 12 dart mag, but we'll see, I suppose. We have new images of new Elite 2.0 blasters that showed up this week, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So let's get into what those are. Um, first up, we have the Volt. This is basically a Fire Strike reimagined, and it's a little hard to get excited about this one. There's not much that seems special. Uh, the only change other than the 2.0 aesthetic is a new rail underneath the blaster, which you can't actually see here. I know that from a description we got a couple weeks back. Uh, it does claim 27 meters of range, which is a whopping 6 meters over the, over the original Fire Strike's claims of 21 meters. And it's the first time we're seeing actual darts in packaging rather than in printed image. Uh, they still look like Elite. Nothing, nothing special or new, just a different color. Uh, next we have the Turbine, which is a reimagined Rapid Strike. Um, I was most excited to see this one, but now I'm less so. Uh, it's got a really, really short stock, it looks like, which might be okay if you're a shorty like me, but if you've got longer arms, you might want to borrow a friend's before you go out and buy your own. Um, I'm also concerned about the barrel. It looks longer than on a Rapid Strike. Uh, you can see that not only is there a jam door at the top, but also on the side of the blaster more forward, so I'm a little worried about jams with this one. Uh, I'm also not a fan of the mag release placement. Um, it's inside of the trigger well, which I prefer to use the thumb on my mag grabbing hand than any of the fingers on my grip hand. But that's, that's entirely personal preference. I know there are plenty of people who would rather hit it with their fingers anyway. Uh, it does come with an 18 round magazine, which is awesome, and double your darts, which is also pretty awesome. So I'm glad they're doing that. Uh, the original Rapid Strike claimed 75 feet of range, and this one says 90 feet. Uh, we'll see how true that is in actuality. Uh, and then last, Drac showed off the Warden on YouTube, and it's a reimagined rough cut. Well, kind of reimagined. Uh, I'm not really seeing many changes at all. It's a shorter tack rail on top and an extra sling point at the front. Uh, you've got just like a rough cut, eight darts, shoots them two at a time, and I love the rough cut. It's such a fun blaster, and this one's claiming to shoot 10 feet farther than the original. And now it's time for the mod of the week, and Rainbow Al did it again with the Russian LS-61. This is an integration of a Zuru Vigilante and an Alpha Trooper. Uh, he's removed the stock, added on a side tack rail, and the priming grip off of an Alpha Trooper, and it came together amazingly. It's got a beautiful paint job with really good dry brushing and realistic dirt and wear. Uh, the tactical flashlight on the side of it, I usually don't like um, the look of new stuff or unpainted stuff, unpainted blasters, but it seems to, to blend in really well, fit nicely, and look really good. Uh, it's been modified so it holds six elite darts or 12 half-length darts instead of the original two. Uh, for FPS, it's not too bad. It's hitting 130 with elites or 110 with halflings. Uh, he did run into a couple of problems during the during this build. Uh, he broke the plunger rod while he was trying to film a show-off video. Whoops, he ended up fixing that though. Uh, and the blaster, he decided to name it the Russian because he was 
unable to get the blaster, did not randomly double fire. <laughs> he ended up deciding to leave that as a feature of the build and centered around this whole Russian theme, which came together quite nicely. I really love your work, Rainbow Owl. It looks super good, and thank you so much for sharing. That's all the news for this week, but there is um, one more thing I wanted to say, and I'm hoping I can do it in one take because it'll be hard to put myself together again. Um, we didn't record last week because Thomas Corbett had passed, um, and it was pretty upsetting. Um, he's very, very loved by so many people. He's just so kind and warm and gave the best hugs. Sometimes it felt weird to say that we were close because we'd only met in person a handful of times, but he really has a knack for when you meet him, it's like you've been friends forever. He's just so open. And even though we'd only met a few times in person, he was always there. He was there for our first Nerf war. He was there for our engagement. He was there for our wedding. He was there any time that we needed advice, whether it was for life or for business. He's just touched so many lives. And I'll put a link in the description to um, Containment Crew's post um, asking for people's favorite Thomas stories. And it's crazy how many of those people have also only met him briefly or a handful of times in person, but every one of them is memorable. That's just the kind of person he is. He was so loved. So make sure that you always take every opportunity to tell your friends that you love them. So so they'll know. And I realized I ramble a little bit. I don't know if I said everything I wanted to say, but I think, I think Brett might be able to sum it up a little more succinctly. Thomas, you are a true friend and a shining example of what this community stood for. We love you and you are missed.